everyone. This is Vishal from Equity Guru, and welcome to another Chart Attack. And today we are talking about currencies. Uh, 2022, you know, is going to be remembered for many things uh, in financial markets, but I think it was the year that we saw major currencies collapse, right? You know, I'm not talking about the Turkish lira. I'm not talking about the incredible, like, the major moves in, like, the Russian ruble. I'm talking about the Japanese yen. I'm talking about the euro and now the British pound. So I know a lot of you crypto meme guys, you guys are including uh, the British pound and the euro and the Japanese yen as uh, shit coins now <laughs> uh, because they are moving just like cryptos. It's incredible to see some of these moves in worldwide currencies. Uh, but I want to scroll back. Let's take a look on the monthly chart for the British pound just so you understand the magnitude um, of this move. And this move, the pound, um, has taken out all time lows basically set back in 1985. Uh, major, major sell-off on the British pound, and it occurred because of the uh, finance minister, I think they call it the, uh, they have a fancy term for the finance minister there, it just escapes me right now. Um, but it put out a budget, called for a decrease in um, corporate tax and income tax, but, but an increase in government spending. So a lot of people, you know, sort of wondering uh, why, the bank or why the UK government is going to, you know, I guess, take more debt to, to, to finance all these programs. Um, and people are basically betting against the, uh, the UK government, I guess, right? Because, you know, rates are rising. They're going to have to borrow money, but they're decreasing taxes at the same time. Um, and uh, that's what led to this major, major sell-off from the British pound. I mean, we had a 3.57% uh, decline on that one day on the 23rd. They were calling it Black Monday, obviously, because that did happen. Um, was it? Uh, sorry, no, it was a Friday. It happened on a Friday, but then the Black Monday, we had another drop that took the uh, pound actually breaking below all-time lows, uh, hence why the term Black Monday for that day. But we saw, you know, this incredible move in the British pound. Just, you know, it was 120, sorry, 112 on Friday. And then early Monday morning, the British pound was like around 104, right? So crazy, crazy move um, in the pound. And, uh, a lot has happened actually since then, right? Because everyone's wondering, what can the British do? Uh, actually, you know, what can the Europeans do as well, right? Uh, Japan is sort of a different case. We sort of understand why there's uh, a big weakness in the Japanese yen. And it's because as all Western central banks are raising interest rates, uh, the Bank of Japan are not, right? They've kept their interest rates at minus 0.1%. Um, hence, you know, when you're looking at interest rate differentials, uh, the yen is going to get beat up. Uh, they have done a currency intervention, as some of you guys know. They are going to be selling foreign reserves to try to prop uh, the Japanese yen. Uh, we'll see what happens. There was some initial success with uh, the yen uh, gaining some strength on all currencies because the yen is getting pounded uh, by many currencies. Um, and now we're going to have to see what happens or what comes of that currency intervention. Uh, historically, they don't really work out too well. Uh, so we'll have to wait and see. Um, but the British pound is what a lot of people are watching because of this major record low. Uh, people are even talking about parity for the British pound, right? That's the next leg lower. It'll take us to parity. Uh, but as we're recording this, a uh, major event happened today, and a lot of people are calling this basically the Bank of England uh, capitulating uh, or maybe going back to quantitative easing, right? Because a lot of people were thinking what the Bank of England can do is they can do a larger rate hike because that's what nations tend to do when they wanna strengthen their currency uh, due to interest rate differentials. They'll try to increase their uh, interest rates a lot. Uh, this brings up another crazy point because you know, as the dollar is getting stronger, uh, the, it's gonna hit all these other currencies while those central banks are increasing interest rates. Um, so you know they can't, well, that tool is not as strong as before, which might force um, central banks to do even higher or, you know, larger interest rate hikes just to try to get confidence or try to get the pound uh, or their currency to strengthen. So uh, watch out for that in the future. I think there might be this surprise rate hike uh, by the Bank of England, and it'll probably be quite substantial, uh, quite large, just to um, get the pound strengthened again. Uh, but what they've done is quite historic, right? They're intervening in the bond market, a lot of people are quant calling it quantitative easing because obviously the Bank of England is going in to buy the uh, 
government bonds are called gilt. So I know there might be some of you guys saying, oh, why is he calling the bonds if UK bonds are called gilt? But I'm just going to call them bonds just for the sake of this uh, video. But essentially, they're stepping in and they're going to be buying the UK government gilt for the bond. <laughs> Sorry, so I'll call them bonds. Uh, the long end of the curve of the uh, UK government bonds. So what that's doing essentially is the Bank of England is buying those bonds to drop yields. And I can actually quickly show you, so I do follow the UK bond charts. Uh, this is the 10-year bond chart. So this is actually showing you the price of the bond. So you got to remember when this is heading lower, uh, the interest rates or the yields on those bonds are actually heading higher. So just like the rest of the world, interest rates have been rising higher on bond yields. Uh, same thing's been happening in the UK. And then all of a sudden you have this big green day because the Bank of England is trying to step in here to keep interest rates or keep yields from spiking higher. Um, I think it's something you might see in other you know, central banks uh, in the near future. But again, the British are trying to do this or the Bank of England are trying to do this to put some stability back in the British pound. And uh, this is a funny thing. I think a lot of people, um, you know, I know a lot of contrarians are sort of laughing at this, but the Bank of England is not calling this quantitative easing because technically they're going to still be buying bonds while raising interest rates. So it's sort of unheard of, you know, they're, they're going to, and they're saying temporarily, but we'll see how long that happens. Um, but, you know, Bank of England still saying here, this is not, us capitulating. This is not us saying we're you know, cutting interest rates. We're going to be buying bonds. We're going to be expanding the balance sheet, uh, doing some easing while raising interest rates at the same time, which is you know, totally opposite to what happens. Generally, central banks start to tighten or lessen the balance sheet because you know, they do hold a lot of bonds, which sort of allow those interest rates and yields to rise higher. So um, quite interesting. We're going to see if this works on the Bank of England's uh, part of things, but I think it just sets this precedent, which other central banks might follow where, you know, why don't we raise interest rates and also uh, do some easing at the same time, which uh, I guess in a way what they're going to do is they're going to be capping the bond traders, the people who trade the, the gilts um, and other bonds around the world. So um, Watch for a major interest rate hike. I think that might be coming from the Bank of England. It'll be sort of a large surprise rate hike, probably like 75 basis points or something like that. Uh, I've heard numbers such as 1% or even 2%, which would be pretty crazy. I don't think they would do something like that. But if, if they really want to make a point uh, to defend the currency, that's, that's something they can do. Uh, but it would you know, obviously impact the economy and the middle class uh, quite a lot. But this is a move that I think you know, is very important to, to watch. You've seen the euro drop, you've seen the Japanese yen drop, uh, and now you're seeing uh, the, Jap uh, the, the British pound drop as well. And it goes back always to that US dollar chart, which is just continuing to move higher. A bit of a relief rally today, which obviously gave uh, some relief for the British pound and the euro and other dollar pairs. But I think the dollar is like one of those important charts uh, to watch because it's not necessarily just uh, a Fed thing, right? Where the, the Fed is very, very hawkish. But I think it could be this, you know, being the reserve currency, right? The safe haven, uh, money around the world, perhaps money from Europe, perhaps money from Asia. Uh, they're looking to run into the U.S. or into the dollar uh, because of how things are going on on their or in their uh, continents, right? So um, keep an eye on that dollar. It's just it's a very very strong one. I know if you've been following my work, uh, you're you're used to me talking about the U.S. dollar because we've been talking about it for quite some time and how it will impact these currencies. Uh, what am I doing with the British pound? Am I buying the pound? Uh, unfortunately, I'm not. I'm still long the US dollar. I do think there'll be a bit of a relief rally here in the pound and perhaps the euro and all these other uh, you know, dollar denominated currencies. Um, again, you know, the pound hasn't just fallen against the US dollar. Uh, you, know, you could trade the pound against the Aussie dollar, uh, the New Zealand dollar, the Canadian dollar. You can see on most of these charts, the pound also fell against those currencies as well. But I tend to use the US dollar or the pound dollar because it's uh, one of the major currency pairs. Um, but I'm watching this 114 level. Uh, I do think, you know, if we get up there, that's when a lot of short sales will come just because they used to be a previous, uh, you know, support now turned resistance from a technical point. But I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, sellers step in even at 110, which is a psychological number. We're not too far away from there or, um, you know, anytime we make a uh, pull higher. So I think this relief 
uh, will unfortunately be sold off uh, by traders unless the Bank of England does something drastic like uh, hiking or raising interest rates um, a lot. So I'm going to leave you guys there. Crazy times with the currencies, things that we've talked about, especially with that US dollar rising and now central banks sort of in trouble because they've been raising interest rates as well. But because of that strong dollar, their currencies are taking a bit of a hit and uh, they might have to bump up those interest rates higher than people have expected just to keep the currency uh, stable and from not collapsing. So give me your thoughts about the British pound. I, I really want to know what you guys are thinking. Um, are you buying pounds here or are you going to short sell uh, on the relief rally? Uh, let me know in the comments below. Give this video a thumbs up. Be sure to follow us and I'll see you guys all in the next chart of time video.